And now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Look, Doc, you better hurry. You said it, Bugs Bunny. Today's the last, the very last day. It's your last chance on this program to hear how to get five, yes, I said five, pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic book. All new, never before published, and all yours, if you hurry, for only 15 cents and one box top from Quaker Puffed Rice or Quaker Puffed Wheat. Stand by. Don't fail to hear the details later on. Sergeant Preston was returning from a long trip into the Arctic. As he entered the town of Craig's Junction, he headed for the cabin of Dr. Drake, whom he had known for many years. The doctor's cabin was a combined office and living quarters, and he served the trappers and prospectors for many miles around the town. As the Mountie entered the cabin, the doctor's face lighted up with welcome. Well, Sergeant Preston, how are you? It's good to see you, Doc. And here's King. Come here, old fellow. He uh, <laughs> wouldn't stay outside. You're one of the few people King insists on seeing whenever we're nearby. He knows how much I like him, don't you, fellow? I think he remembers the time you fixed his paw when he cut it so badly. He's an intelligent animal. You'll, you'll stay for supper, won't you, Preston? I'd like to, thanks. Oh, fine. Also, I... Uh, I want you to have a look at my hand. I hmm? got a touch of frostbite up north. I think a little infection set in. Well, take off your pocket and get warm first. It's certainly a pleasure to have you around again. We've missed you. I'll be back on my usual patrol for the time now. Good, good. Sit down, Preston. Hi. Anything new happened since I've been away? Well, not much. Guy Bingay dropped a log on his foot and smashed a couple of tools. Oh. And Bill Ardsley had another heart attack. It's a good thing for Bill he has you near him. He'd have been dead long ago if he hadn't. If I had as much money as Bill, I'd get out of the Yukon and go to a better climate. They told me he'd never trust another doctor. He's very fond of you, Doc. Well, Bill's one of my best friends, as well as being a patient. He told me he's leaving you quite a fortune in his will. He said you're the only doctor in the world who would keep a man alive knowing he'd be rich if he let him die. Well, I've tried to persuade him to change that will. Not that I couldn't use the money, but I'm afraid his nephew Jack holds it against me. Jack doesn't deserve his uncle's entire fortune. No matter what he inherits, it'll be gone inside a year. Mm -hmm. Probably what Jack holds against you is the fact that you're the one who keeps his uncle alive. Jack and I don't get along very well. I've been quite stern with him lately. Huh? Half his uncle's trouble is caused by that boy. Well, let's have a look at your hand, Preston. That's this one. Let's see. Yes, you're right. It is infected. Hold it closer to the lamp. Sure. Hmm. It's a good thing you came here tonight. That hand needs treatment. I think you'd better plan to stay with me for a day or so until it's better. Oh, I can do that. I'm ahead on my schedule. Uh, come in. Doc, yes? you come quick. Mr. Ardsley, him got heart attack. Him not got medicine. Well, I'll be right over, Dorak. Is Jack with him? Uh, no, him gone to Dawson. You come now? Just as soon as I get my bag. Let me go. <clears throat> Poor Bill. I'll have to hurry. I can't imagine why he ran out of medicine so quickly. Left him a full bottle just a week ago. I'll be back as soon as I can, Preston. And in the meantime, put two of these pills in that hot water 
and shook your hand. All right. I hope Bill's heart attack isn't too serious. Yes, should I. I'll do what I can for him. Sergeant Preston was asleep by the time Dr. Blake returned to his cabin. And it wasn't until the next morning that he learned the outcome of Bill Ardsley's heart attack. The doctor told about it while he treated Preston's hand. Bill will be all right for a while again. The attack last night wasn't as bad as usual. If he had had his medicine, it wouldn't have been necessary to call me at all. What happened to his medicine? Well, Jack knocked it off the shelf accidentally and the bottle broke. Oh, huh? Jack with him now? He's due back from Dawson sometime this morning. You going over to see Bill? I have some other calls first, but I'll drop in to see him later in the day. He'll be all right. When I left him last night, he was sleeping like a baby. Uh, Dorak will be with him this morning. Dorak? But he's the Indian who came after me last night. Oh. He works for Bill. Comes every morning. Well, maybe I'll run over and see Bill myself this morning. No, you'd better not be too active until your hand is better. A walk won't hurt me. King will want some exercise anyway. Later that morning, Sergeant Preston and King went to Bill Ardsley's cabin. The door was opened by Dorak. The Indian's usually expressionless face was a mask of fright. Hello, Dorak. You? Police? Oh, I just came to say hello to Mr. Wesley. How is he this morning? Me. Me me come just now, find him dead. Dead? Hmm. Let me in here, Dorak. <laughs> me stay last night till Mr. Ardsley sleep. Me get here late this morning. He's dead all right. Must have taken a dose of his medicine this morning. Corks out of the bottle. Did you give it to him? No. No, no, me come just now. This medicine has a strange smell. That medicine, same bottle Doc bring last night. Here, take a smell of it. You look frightened, Dorak. You smell the same thing I do, poison. The poison trappers use. Me not know. Me not know. Me go home last night, not touch bottle. Whoever did tamper with it did a very clumsy job. A doctor would know by looking at Bill Ardsley that he died of poisoning and not a heart attack. Doc, give him bottle. Me see him. Uh, Jack, come. Has he been away all night? Him not here last night. Hello, Jack. Sergeant what are you doing? Your uncle is dead. What? Bill dead? No. I suppose this is quite a shock to you. I shouldn't have left him. He seemed to be all right. Let me see him. Not a very pleasant sight, I'm afraid. What? awful. As if, as if... As if he'd been poisoned. Is that what you meant? Yes. Are you sure it was a heart attack that killed him? I'm sure a heart attack didn't kill him. This is what killed him, the poison in this bottle. Who gave him that bottle? Dr. Blake? Dr. Blake was with him last night. So that's it. I shouldn't have left Uncle Bill. I knew this would happen sometime. What do you mean, Jack? I've never trusted Blake. Uncle Bill is leaving him half his money. He waited until I was away, then poisoned him. Then he could say Uncle Bill died of a heart attack and nobody would know the difference. I wouldn't be too quick to accuse Dr. Blake if I were you. He was a good friend of your uncle's. He pretended to be a good friend, but all he wanted was Uncle Bill's money. If he's a good doctor, what's he doing way up here in the Yukon? Why didn't he stay where he could make money at his profession in a civilized place? I've never asked him that. Well, I accuse him of my uncle's murder and I demand that you arrest him. Looks as if I'm going to have to do that. He had a motive and he was the last one to see my uncle. He gave him the poison. He knew I wasn't here, and he didn't know you'd happen to be passing through here today. Whoever killed your uncle certainly didn't know that. You'll put him under arrest immediately, won't you, Sergeant? I'll keep him in custody until I've investigated the case further. I don't see why investigation's necessary. It's all pretty obvious, isn't it? Would you take him to Dawson? No. I'll put him in jail here at Craig's Junction temporarily. I'll keep this bottle. Come along, King. We'll go find Dr. Blake. Dr. Blake's face was white and tense as he listened to Sergeant Preston. So I'll have to put you under arrest until I investigate further, Doc. But I? it's ridiculous, Preston. I wouldn't murder a man. I'm sure you're not guilty. But under the circumstances, I must arrest you. Doc's accusing you directly, and you were the last one to see, Bill. If I stand trial, I'll hang. No jury in the world will think I'm innocent. They'll say I did it because you were here. Thinking I wouldn't be suspected with a Monty ride in my own home? Clever man might do just that. Then you don't really think I'm innocent, do you? I know you're innocent, Doc, and I'm going to prove it. I want a couple of days to find out a few things. But what if you don't find anything? I'll be brought to trial and found guilty. Doc, you have the finest reputation in the Yukon. Everyone who knows you is your friend. I'm sure I can clean this up and find the man who did it. 
You'll be confined in the local jail for a day or two, that's all. You can play cards with old Jake. He's a good friend of yours, and Jake will let you have your patients come see you there if necessary. What, what are you going to do in the meantime? I'm going to make a quick trip to Dawson and do some checking on Jack's visit there. You suspect him too? Oh, so you had the same idea. He was very quick to accuse you. I'm surprised you didn't speak up about him. I wouldn't accuse anyone of anything without proof. You're a fine man, Doc. That's one reason I know you could never do anything bad. Now, come on, get your things. You shouldn't drive your team to Dawson and back with your hand in that condition, Preston. It's, it's likely to become serious, unless you're careful. It's not half as serious as what might happen to you if I don't start investigating immediately. You're next. Much more important than my hand. Come on, Doc. There's no time to lose. Sergeant Preston reached Dawson that night and after reporting the murder at headquarters, started checking every bar and cafe in town, questioning everyone about the activities of Jack Ardsley. The following morning, his hand was swollen and painful, but he said nothing about it when he reported to Inspector Grayson. I have the proof I was after, sir. Jack Ardsley left Dawson the afternoon of the day his uncle was murdered. I found two men who met him on the trail. He was in Craig's Junction the night his uncle died. You'll have to have more proof than that, you know, Sergeant. Well, he could have stopped somewhere on the way, but he said he spent the night in Dawson. He'll have a hard time proving that. Well, you may be able to sweat the truth out of him. And I hope you can. But I've rather shocking news for you, Sergeant. What do you mean, sir? I'm afraid you made a mistake not bringing Dr. Blake back to Dawson with you. But, Inspector, I'm sure he's innocent. We checked on him yesterday as soon as you reported the case. Dr. Blake left Ottawa after being tried for murder. What? He was acquitted, but the publicity ruined his reputation and his practice. That's why he came up to the Yukon, where no one knew him. Well, that means he wouldn't have a chance if he had to stand trial on this charge. I'm afraid he wouldn't. Especially since the first case was also poisoning. Poisoning, sir? Here's the report if you want to read it. But it's pretty obvious he wouldn't try the same thing again, sir. The man's too intelligent. Well, you'd have a hard time convincing a jury of that, Sergeant. I'm sure he's innocent, Inspector. I'd stake my life on it. The whole thing's just a coincidence. Your judgment is usually very sound, Preston. But we can all be wrong. I'll start back to Craig's Junction at once, sir. Good luck, Sergeant. I hope you and King are right about Dr. Blake. I'm sure we are, Inspector. Goodbye, sir. In spite of the increasing pain in his hand... Sergeant Preston drove his dog team at a swift pace toward Craig's Junction. He stopped at each cabin along the trail to inquire whether Jack had spent the night, but was given the same answer everywhere. No one had seen him. Darkness had fallen as he stopped the team in front of the jail at Craig's Junction. Walking! Hello! Sergeant Preston! What's the matter, Jake? I'm ashamed to tell you that my prisoner broke jail. Dr. Blake? Yep. I guess I wasn't careful enough. According to the way you two talked, I thought he was just here till you got back. What happened? Well, we were playing cards, and somehow or other, Doc grabbed my handcuffs and clamped them on me before I could move. Then he gagged me and tied me to the bed with a torn-up blanket. I was there three hours before they found me. Doc leave town? He sure did. He got his dog team and took every bit of food out of his cabin and skid skedaddled. He went north. I knew I couldn't catch him, so I decided to wait for you. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I never thought he'd do a thing like that. Do you suppose he's guilty of killing Bill Ardsley? I can't believe he is, but it certainly looks like it. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Attention, fellas and girls. Don't be left out. What's up, Doc? Today's the day, the very last day of the sensational radio offer made only by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The delicious, crisp, nourishing breakfast cereals shot from gum. It's absolutely your last chance, fellas and girls, to hear how to get five, not one, but Five Bugs Bunny comic books. All yours if you hurry for only 15 cents and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice. Remember, you can't get these handy pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books anywhere else. They're all brand new. You've never seen or read them before. They're all different. All complete. Just think. 
five wonderful stories, 32 full-color pages in each book. Yes, 160 pages crammed full of fun, excitement, thrills, mystery, adventure. Wow, Doc, what an offer. For instance, just listen to the exciting books you get in set C. Bugs Bunny's Secret Agent. Bugs Bunny Lost in the Frozen North. Bugs Bunny Fights the Man from Mars. Bugs Bunny and the Haunted Cave. Bugs Bunny Captured by Cannibal. Yes, we'll send you a set of five books. And we'll let you know how easy it is to get ten more Bugs Bunny comic books. But you must hurry. Go to your grocer on the double quick. Buy a package of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. Then don't wait. Cut off the top of the package right away. Write your name and address on it. And send it immediately, along with 15 cents, just one thin dime and a nickel, to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Look, Doc, you better hurry. Bugs is right. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Send only 15 cents, your name and address, and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Then mail pronto to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Here's that address again. It's Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue our story. When Sergeant Preston returned to Craig's Junction, he learned that Dr. Blake had escaped from jail and left town. The sergeant's hand was so painful that he decided to follow the trail accompanied by Dorak, the Indian. You think King find trail? Of course. King knows Dr. Blake, and I made doubly sure by letting him smell the sweater that belonged to the doctor. There. King's got the scent. All right, boy, we're coming. On King! On your husband! Dr. Blake's team was a strong and powerful one, and the trail led due north into the mountains. Sergeant Preston's hand throbbed painfully under its heavy mitten, but he plodded on as fast as he could. King's strong muscles bulged under the harness as he led the dog team up the mountain. The following day, the trail grew narrow and treacherous as they ascended, and a steep precipice bordered one side of it. Dorak guided the sled carefully, and Sergeant Preston plodded wearily behind him, his teeth clenched to keep back the moan of pain that welled up inside him. His hand fell as if it were on fire, and it took all of his self-control to keep from falling. Suddenly, the sled gave a sickening lurch. Dorak, clinging to the handlebars, was almost thrown off balance, but he held on. What happened, Dorak? What's wrong? Strap break. Sled almost go over side of cliff. Oh, if I could only use my hand. You think you can fix it? Ah, uh, me fix. Well, be careful. The trail's narrow, and it doesn't look too solid near the edge there. Me fix. Jorak edged along the trail on the outside of the sled cautiously. But suddenly, his foot slipped on a loose rock. With a cry of terror, he grabbed for the sled, but missed and went rolling over the edge. All right! All right! Grasping the handlebars of the sled with his good hand, the Mountie leaned over the edge of the trail. Sergeant! He saw the figure of the Indian on a ledge about ten feet below. Dorak, you hurt? Not able to move legs. I'll throw a rope down to you. Here it is. Tie one end of the sled. There it is, Dorak. Can you hang on to it? What's wrong? Can't you move? Shoulder hurt, too. Me can't move. You have to move, Dorak. Can't you tie the end of the rope around your waist? I'll try and fix the harness, and the team can pull you up. No. No can do. I've got to get help. I can't get down to you. I'll lower a blanket. Try to cover yourself. Lying on his stomach, Sergeant Preston lowered a fur robe over the edge of the trail. It dropped on the figure of Dorak, who lay very still. Then the Mountie stepped carefully along the inside of the trail toward King, who stood in harness at the head of the team. I guess it's up to you, boy. Hope I can get you out of that harness with one hand. There, you're free. Hold on, fella. It's going to take me a while to write a note with my left hand. The Mountie slowly printed a message. His brain reeled and the throbbing pain in his hand grew worse. But at last it was ready, and King waited while he fastened the note to his collar. There you are, boy. From here on, it's up to you. I hope we're not wrong about Dr. Blake. Take it to Dr. Blake, King. Find Blake, find him. On, King! The great dog seemed to know that once again his master's life depended on his speed and strength. Free of the burden of the heavy sled, he sped rapidly up the mountain trail. 
Darkness found him still running, but now the trail was on the downward slope, and the scent of Dr. Blake was strong in his nostrils as he raced toward a campfire built in the shelter of some rocks. Dr. Blake leaped to his feet, his gun in his hand, as the dog ran toward him, but he let the weapon fall back in its holster as he recognized King in the light of the fire. Where did you come from, Brian? Christian must be coming. Frantically, the big dog barked and whined, pawing the man, trying to tell Dr. Blake to come with him. Is something wrong, King? Is Preston in trouble? Uh, just a minute. Is that a note on your collar? Oh, hold still, King. Wait a minute, fella. Oh, this fire isn't too bright. There, now I can see. So, so your master is in trouble. He's asking me to come back to him. But if I do... I'll hang. When Sergeant Preston opened his eyes, he found himself in a small, dimly lighted cabin. He lay for a moment, trying to remember where he was. And then the figure of Dr. Blake bent over him, and the events of the night before flooded into his memory. You awake, Preston? Yes. How'd you do it, Doc? You mean what we went through last night? No. Getting Doric up the side of the cliff was something I'll never forget. It was a good thing we had a moon to work by. You passed out with exhaustion. And you didn't leave again. You're still here. Doric's asleep. I worked over him all night. How was your hand? It pained a little. You're lucky I didn't have to amputate. You're a strong man, Sergeant, and so is Doric. You're both fortunate to be alive. We wouldn't be if it hadn't been for you. I knew you'd come back. I'm going back with you, Preston. Even though I know it's useless. They'll never believe I didn't kill Bill Ardsley. I'll hang for it. No jury will convict you when they hear how you saved Doric and me. Juries are funny. You're referring to the jury in Ottawa? You know about that? Yes. You were acquitted, Doc. Yes. But there was plenty of circumstantial evidence against me. It was just a case of whether the jury believed me or the evidence. But if I'm placed on trial for another murder, I won't have a chance. I'll hang. I know it. No. You know I ain't, Doc. Doric, you were awake. Are you all right? Yeah, me all right. You saved Doric's life. He saved both our lives, Doric, when he could have saved his own. Oh, Doc, not die. Him not kill Ardsley. What do you mean, Doric? Me, no, Doc, not put poison in bottle. What? Jack Ardsley, him do it. What? Doric? Me get poison for him. Doric, I must warn you, anything you say may be used against you, but if you can give me proof... Me see Jack come home last night. Him put poison in bottle... Go away again. Why didn't you tell this sooner, Doric? Before Preston arrested me. Me afraid. Me afraid. Jack say him give me money if me not tell. Him say if me tell. Him tell Lord Doric help him. Then me hang too. But me not let Doc die. When him come back and save me. The jury will believe you, Doric. Me tell everything. Thank you, Doric. Yeah. It's the only thing that will save me. You not worry, Doc. Sergeant Preston, if me tell law about Jack Ardsley, then me hang. I can't make any promises, Doric. No. It not matter. Me not want Doc to hang. We'll get back to Craig's Junction as soon as possible, and then I'll pick up Jack Arsley. You won't be able to use your hand for a while, Preston. I won't need this hand to arrest a murderer. Doc, how'd you know about this cabin? One of my patients lived here. I know these mountains like the palm of my hand. How soon shall we start for Craig's Junction? As soon as we can safely move Doric. Three days later, Sergeant Preston went to Jack Arsley's cabin with King at his side. Sergeant, did you catch Blake? Yes, Dr. Blake came back with me. Did King trail him? King found him all right. Mind if I step in? No, no, of course not. Wait here, King. What 
What's the matter with your arm, Sergeant Preston? You can't get in the sling. Oh, nothing much. I can't use it for a while. Jack, I have bad news for you. Bad news? What do you mean? I'm arresting you in the name of the Queen for the murder of your uncle. You're out of your mind. You have no proof. Blake did it. He broke jail, didn't he? I have all the proof I need. I found out that you came back here the night your uncle was murdered instead of staying in Dawson. Doric told everything. Doric? Why, that dirt... It's not true. He's lying. A jury will decide that. Doric told us how he gave you the poison and how you bribed him not to tell. You wanted Blake convicted so you'd get all of your uncle's money. You're smart, Preston. You've got it all worked out. And I'll admit you're right. I got rid of my uncle. And I can get rid of you. You've got only one hand. Wait. That does it. You'd better put down that gun. I'll put it down when I'm through with you. Do you think I'd let you take me in and hang me? Not on your life. You can't get away with murder. Oh, yes, I can. I killed my uncle, and I'll kill you, and I'll get away with both murders. You've overlooked one thing. King's right outside the door, and the door's not latched. He'll be in here like a flash. All he needs is a split second, and I can give it to him by bumping you. you. Sergeant Preston's quick attack caught Jack off balance. The shot went wild. Come on, King! King heard the Mounties cry. The great dog leaped through the air, throwing all his weight against the killer. King's jaws gripped Jack Arsley's gun arm, and Sergeant Preston, leaping forward, grabbed the gun. Take him off! Take him off! Take this dog away! Hold that, King down, boy. You're covered, Jack. I have your gun. Dog. Yes, you forgot about him, didn't you? Now come along and remember, King will be watching you. Yes, old fellow. You more than make up for an injured hand. Thanks to you, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Look, Doc, you better hurry. And Bugs Bunny does mean hurry. This is the last call, the very last time for all time that we can tell you on this program how to get your five Bugs Bunny comic books. Actually, five different pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books for only 15 cents and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. You can't get them anywhere else. You've never seen or read them before. They're all brand new. Don't miss the excitement, mystery, laughs, and thrills in such stories as Bugs Bunny Lion Tamer, Bugs Bunny Outwits the Smugglers, Bugs Bunny Captured by Cannibals. If you hurry, we'll not only send you five different books, we'll also send you full information for getting ten more. Send today without fail. This is the last, absolutely the last day of this radio offer. Send 15 cents in coin, not stamps, just 15 cents and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Address your letter to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now repeat that. Write it down right away. Send to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case trapped. When King and I went to Whitehorse for a short stay... We got there just in time to take over a case that involved a young fellow we knew and liked. I thought it would be a routine matter, catching up with a murderer and making the arrest. But I came face to face with a danger that was almost sure death. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and 